kind of apologize for Big Bubba in advance. I didn't know he was gonna show up tonight. You're showing up in a Mack truck. And he's like, I'm showing up. So I was like, that's great. Every time I got on stage, I gotta lower this thing to like Disneyland level. Hold on. Well, that's the thing. Now I just gotta lift this up. That's the thing about being Irish. It's one of the side effects is being short. But my mom was always so nice about me being short. Fuck this. My mom was so nice about being short. She goes, Eric, you know, you're not that short. I'm like, oh yeah, mom? Well, you don't have to buy all your clothes at the Baby Gap, okay? It's a little emasculating when you walk into the Baby Gap and you ask for a 3211. <laughs> I mean, I'm 35, I still gotta stick newspapers in my shoes to get on fucking roller coasters. <laughs> but the greatest thing about being this short, you have two jobs. You can always be shot out of a cannon at the circus, or be the stunt double for the midget on Game of Thrones. <laughs> He's got a better beard than me, though. But you know what the funny thing is about being Irish? Is you find and you gravitate towards other funny people. My girlfriend is very, very funny. She's one of the few uh she's one of the exceptions that's funny so uh she she sits there and she says things and she always just says that i steal all of her jokes she's like you get all your material from me i'm like that's not true so the other day i got my period right <laughs> uh, you know what i'm talking about girls right the bloating the cramps and don't even get me started on guys leaving that toilet seat up. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but not only is my girlfriend funny, she's also a yoga instructor. A yoga instructor, you know? And then every guy on the door, hey, your girlfriend's a yoga instructor, the better she's flexible. No, actually, she's in a wheelchair and she's a yoga instructor, okay? <laughs> But my girlfriend is so loving. Yoga instructors are different than any other kind of person on earth. They're just full of love, you know? And, and they always put their heart forward, you know? So she comes home from a party and she goes, I got an idea to te uh, teach a new group of people yoga. So I'm like, oh, that's great. The disabled, the elderly. She goes, no, I want to teach yoga to the Steam Fitters Union of New York. <laughs> okay, no offense. But union workers are literally one step away from having a wooden leg and an eye patch, okay? <laughs> and we all know how much pirates love booty, okay? <laughs> I go, what's next? The sexual predator convention of the United States? All right, now everybody breathe. Okay, now let's do this. <laughs> Are you boys getting excited? Half of them are like this. <laughs> I didn't know yoga was a Frankenstein move, you know? So my 35th birthday's coming up, everybody. Woo! Yeah, thanks. Three quarters of the way to my death. <laughs> Sucks getting old, you know? You gotta pay taxes, if you decide to. <laughs> pay taxes, pay bills, do all this shit. Remember when you were a little kid, and you were seven, and you got sick? You remember it was like an event, it's like, strike up the band, it's 4 a.m., and I got a tummy ache. I ate my weight in Cheetos. They're waking up the dog, they're waking up their siblings, they call their grandma, they call, then they, what we all do is we go down the hallway and go, uh, as you just wipe your teddy bear against the wall. Uh, then your parents are half in the bag from drinking all night the night before. And they just see a shadow in their room. Uh, uh, Mom, I think I'm going to be sick. And dad just passed out because he probably drank three quarters of a bottle of vodka. So my mom is the only one that's free. Uh, uh, I'm going to be sick. I think my tummy hurts. So my mom's following me around with a pail, you know. And moms are always the best, ginger ale. But when I was homesick, I used to watch Caddyshack, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Robocop, okay? And my parents always got, like, you know, a little weird when I used to skip school and shoot up people, you know what I'm saying? I was like, where do you think I got it from? <laughs> well, you know what? But it changes. Throwing up changes. As you get older, it's just like a natural occurrence. When you're in your 20s and you're playing beer pong, you're like, Gah! you just pull the trigger on the side of the table and you're like, yep, yeah, puke and rally, bro. Still going, bro.
brother. And then when you get to be 30, right? When you become 30 years old, you know when you brush your teeth and you throw up from the night of drinking before? It's like, I don't think that $2 wing and $2 beer night was the greatest idea I ever heard in my goddamn life. Another thing I notice when I'm 30, I can't hear what anybody is saying on television. Can anyone else hear? Does anybody have to play the, the, the volume jockey game? You know what I'm saying? Every time I turn on a show, I was like, what the, did this guy just say his parrot does the mambo? Oh, my parrot does the mambo because I think it's on the show. And then as soon as I crank the volume up to 300, you know what happens? explosion happens all the windows in my apartment get blown out so watching Westworld cost me about thirty five hundred dollars <laughs> oh, I mean you know just you know t TV I actually took my cable box out of my goddamn room about three months ago and it's the greatest thing I've ever done TV is actually the worst with the mumbling and the loud sounds though commercials are like a jet plane taking off it's like they're watching a show and then it's like, try fix a dent for your nasty dentures. Selena and Barnes in the reattorney. 1877, turn it, turn it. So whenever I get my uh, apartment, I always have to practice my hellos. Because my hellos are just always kind of sound douchey. It's like, hello. I'm like, oh, that sounds way too depressed. And I go, hello. I'm like, all right, that's a way too movie phone guy. Do you guys remember the movie phone guy? Yeah. Oh, imagine if that guy was your dad. <laughs> you bring home a bad report card. He's like, son, press one if you like to beat me with that, uh, beat you with the hand. Press two for the belt, and press three for three weeks grounded. I think that guy retired as the voice of the Long Island Railroad. Next up, run Konkuma. <laughs> Ah, but Long Island commercials are literally the worst. They're the worst. Whenever I come home on my lunch break, I always see the same two goddamn commercials. It's the beating dog Sarah McLaughlin commercial. You think the goddamn director could give the dog a biscuit, feed him for two seconds? Don't feed him yet! He looks really emaciated! Show his ribs! Everybody loves ribs! Leave those flies on his eyes! People always love flies! And then the other one is... I've been smoking for 25 years and they cut my fingers and my toes off. Oh my god, I'm trying to eat a goddamn tuna right here! So not only is my lunch break depressing enough, I gotta go home and I gotta work these I gotta work these goddamn hors d'oeuvre parties. Anybody in the service industry here ever? Yeah! Alright. Two things. Everybody should get punched out one in their life, and two, everybody should surf tables at one life just to know how it gets an ass beat 24 hours a day. So what I do is I do past hors d'oeuvres. Past hors d'oeuvres. Now, it wouldn't be so bad if the three same fucking people didn't show up every time. There's the dumb, I don't know what I'm doing guy, you know, who acts surprised what's ever on the plate. He always first comes up to me like he's like, he, like he's playing piano. He's like this. So he comes up to me, I'm holding a plate of pigs in a blanket. He goes, oh, what's this? <laughs> I'm like, it's fucking creme brulee. What the fuck you think it is? It's horse lips and pig assholes, all right? It's fucking hot dogs. Either this guy's from Mars or he's just a complete nimcompoop. <laughs> then you have the apologetic, sorry lady who comes up to you. She goes, oh, she's, let me take one of these. Just, just let me take every... She's got more excuses than a pregnant nun, okay? <laughs> oh, let me take this. I didn't eat lunch. I'm famished. <laughs> this is for a 
friend. I rode a pony here. I'm watching my point. I'm a complete slob. I had one lady one time put a fake mustache on and come back from all her apps. She sounded like Mrs. Doubtfire. So, hello! May I have more appetizers, please? And then, then there's the guy. I, I kind of respect this guy. I don't hate him. It's the I don't give a fuck guy at the buffet, okay? He's the guy that comes up to you, goes, he gets you beside before the party starts and goes, hey, listen, every time you bring a goddamn plate over here, I want you to come to me, okay? <laughs> so I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, now I got Tony Soprano on my ass for the rest of the night. So I bring him the first plate, and he locks eyes with me from across the room, and he's just like this. He stops what he's doing, he's like, looks at me like this. He kind of gave me the look like a, like a manager gives the pitcher in the ninth inning on the mound, he's like this. <laughs> Bring those goddamn things over here, all right? But the thing is, with these guys, they make a plate like they're going to the goddamn electric chamber. They're like, they're going to an electric chair. It's just like, this guy literally made two plates, okay? He made two plates and he made it so big he had to carry it with two arms. He looked like a gorilla in the jungle carrying berries. All right, so one final thing. My job doesn't suck fucking enough. I have a ladies' night. Here we go. And the time is right. We got ladies' night. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Well, friggin' ladies' night is the worst, okay? I wish I had jo John Taffer to be there for me, okay? Because John Taffer would walk in and be like, You call this a Negroni? Do you call this a Tapper up here? You're a moron. I'd like to see him do, like, kid parties. You call yourself a clown? You call this a giraffe balloon? I invented the butt funnel! <laughs> so they tell me it's ladies' night, and here I am. I think I'm going to be with 86 knockouts. I think I'm going to be Tom Cruise from Cocktail. What happens? I'm Steve Gutenberg from Cocoon, okay? I made so many Metamucil martinis last week, I got tennis elbow. Last Tuesday, I gave 200 goddamn flu shots out. Who else fucking does that? And then as soon as 6 o'clock, what happens? The stampede comes in. It smells like a whiff of like the Golden Girls, and I crank up the radio for the Jurassic Park theme. I feel like being Jeff Goldblum would be like, why are these ladies so old for five dollar drinks? Huh? You'd think they'd be a little bit more generous. All right, guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming out. Loose Cat and Comics Podcast, cheap plug, and you can always catch. Now, we got the Billy Zane 